points. So, and when you are making a film, you have to understand that you are in such a position. And depending on how good or bad you take that position, you uh, become very vulnerable to the universe that is around you. So you are no more only evaluated for the quality of the work you're doing, but you are evaluated by who you are because that becomes very visible on the screen. Let's say an honest film is the kind of film that shows what the filmmaker behind the film has to say. And that becomes the point where filmmaking becomes very different, art becomes quite different to other fields of work where you do not have to expose your true personality, where you do not have to uh, put yourself in the position of someone who can be judged, who can be evaluated, who can be seen without any barriers in front of the audience. Now, when I started making films, of course, I started from the very earliest steps of being fascinated by filmmaking and started by watching a lot of films, reading a lot of books, um, following a lot of magazines and slowly decided to take filmmaking courses. So I took more or less the same path that many of the people who are in this session um, are taking at the moment. And when I started, I was hoping, I mean, I, I hope, <laughs> I hoped that someone uh, would come and ask me this question, Kaveh, why are you actually going to make films? And nobody asked me that question when I was a student. Nobody um, proposed the question seriously enough for me to go and think about it. So what happened was that after the course was finished and when I was trying to make films, I always had this uncomfortable feeling about what I'm doing and I never realized what this source of discomfort is until I realize that the, the source of this discomfort, the source of this nature of this business that is quite different to accounting or uh, being a dentist or being a politician is that you need to ask an extremely personal question. And that's why do you want to make films? And I think that's the first step for any of you who want to be uh, filmmakers in a serious manner to ask this question from yourselves. Why in the first place you want to be filmmakers? You, you could have very, very different answers from each other. It would be even odd that two of you would have the same answers to this question. And I think the answer to this question could be a very strong guiding light uh, to what you actually uh, want to do as a filmmaker. I give you an example of myself so you understand where I'm coming from and you understand how I see filmmaking. And then you can see based on that what kind of films I like to make, right? So after a very long struggle with myself trying to figure out why I'm actually interested in filmmaking, I realized that the main reason I want to make films is I would like to uh, raise questions about certain things that are my hopes and my fears. And I needed to understand those hopes and I needed to understand those fears properly. And for understanding them, I had to raise certain questions about those fears, about those hopes. And I realized that deep down, this was the, my way of understanding who I am and my way of understanding the universe that is around. So, I realized that filmmaking has become a way for me to understand my uh, life and to understand who I am in this life. And therefore, once I really understood this, I realized that there is nothing I can make that is not extremely personal to me. 
I realized that by having such an answer, that by knowing that I'm making sense in order to explore my own fears, in order to explore my own vulnerabilities, my hopes, my deep down secrets, I am actually uh, obliged to a certain type of filmmaking, which is very personal, which is very intimate, and which reveals a lot about human psychology uh, deriving from myself. Now, I think as filmmakers, you do need to uh, ask such questions from yourselves. And you have to ask these questions not once and for all, say, okay, I have the answer, I'm gonna live my life from now on. Now I have the answer to this big question. But it's a question you keep revising as you go on in your car career as filmmakers. So I think as, a, as an assignment that I would like to propose to you, of course, this is not an assignment for me. This is not uh, something I would like you to send me afterwards. This is an assignment for yourselves, is to find this time. Now, the great thing about, one of the very few great things about pandemic is that we have a lot of time to, to, to invest on ourselves to think about what we are doing and why we are doing it. And really seriously ask this question, why am I making films? And if you do not answer this question, today you would be making one film, tomorrow you would be making another film which is completely different. And then the next day you would be thinking of something else. And we know many filmmakers across the history of cinema who do not have consistent uh, careers, who do not have very consistent approach to filmmaking. And we know very great filmmakers who actually have very consistent way of looking at cinema. Um, let's say when you see films from Bergman, um, even though each film is very different to the other film, there is an overarching personality that you see in all the films that is coming from a very consistent um, mindset. So I think these are the questions that are extremely vital to us. And it's the beginning of any conversation we want to have. It's the beginning of the conversation about what story. It's the beginning of the conversation of what shot size. It's the beginning of the conversation of which location, which crew member, how many days of shooting, how much money, which festivals, all those questions in one way or another are related to this main question. And that is, why do you want to be a filmmaker? Um, in many cases, uh, I had a few students who actually uh, told me that when they really, really seriously thought about it, they realized that they do not know yet. And that's completely normal. Some of them actually told me that when we are thinking about it, it's a bit embarrassing our uh, answers because, well, I had this feeling that filmmaking is a very glamorous job, full of attention, full of spotlight, full of red carpets, and that's maybe my reason. And I said, well, okay, at least that's the beginning of realizing um, why you are doing filmmaking. It doesn't mean that it should stay like that. It doesn't mean that it has to stay like that. But I think you do need to know it before you actually take a pen or sit in front of your keyboard and start writing a script. Once you answer this question, I can assure you that you will feel much more confident about what story is yours, and more importantly, what story is not yours. And this way you would be able to understand how you can filter the stories and the ideas uh, that are irrelevant to you. I have a lot of great friends who are filmmakers or who are friends who are fascinated in cinema and they tell me, yeah, there is this man in Prague that, you know, he's living on a fake passport and um, he's been living like that for 20 years. COVID, this is a great story for a uh, film. Don't you want to do it? And the, for me, the only way I can evaluate, because those kind of things keep coming to you, ideas, you know, you watch the news, you read the news, it's just 
narratives, news of things happening across the universe. Somebody stole from someone, somebody killed someone else. All sorts of stories of corruption, politicians, romances, sports. They are all narratives from which we can find stories. But you need that filter. And that filter comes from the simple question, why are you making films? And that would be my main assignment, not to you, to myself, to any filmmaker at any stage of career. It could be a question you are even asking yourself while you're on the shoot. So I leave this to you, whether you would like to do it, it's uh, another question, but I know that sooner or later it will come to you. And we will move on from this topic. If anyone has any questions about this, you can ask. Otherwise, I want to go to the second question, and that's why making shorts. Is there anything anyone wants to ask at this point? Yeah. Uh, before, uh, I will introduce my friend. My friend, uh, we, ha we, are, we were in the same school in Macedonia. <laughs> oh. so, here's Nicola. Uh, ah. Hi, how are you? Hey, Nicola. Yeah, he's, uh, we were studying together in uh, Fiova in uh, Ohrid, small city in Macedonia. And he's a Macedonian actor, also a screenwriter, right? Nicola, I think you're mute. Can you mute your... Uh, hi, Nicola. Okay, we are good now. We are good now. <laughs> yeah. You can listen to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. We were studying in the, at the same school. How are you from Macedonia? Good, good. I'm good. It's morning here. <laughs> yeah. So good morning, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Good uh, morning. Uh, He's a he's an actor and a screenwriter also. So he would like to join your class, Cave. Cave is sure. a filmmaker based on Pra, and he's a great filmmaker. So Nicola also a great filmmaker. So we could uh, share experience. Yeah, I actually great. spent two beautiful weeks in Ohrid in the in the same school you went to. Uh, we we were part of a course for midpoint with Ivo Trykov and yeah, Ivo. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, a few other people. It's a beautiful city, Ohrid. I remember my walks across the lake. It was very yeah. very it was great beautiful. time. I miss that. Uh, yeah. You, you know so, Ivo. You know Ivo also, right, Kave? Yes, I worked with him for almost two years. I know yeah. him quite well. Yes. Yeah. He he was. He was our teacher, right, Nicola? <laughs> yes, he was our mentor. Yes, <laughs> yeah. he's a he's a he's a very he's clever like, gentleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining, Nicola. So thank um, you, thank you for the inviting. Yeah. So, uh, nah, kalian kalau mau bertanya, so everybody wants to ask cafe about anything. Uh, who do you want first? Why well, keep silent? <laughs> Me. Okay. Introduce yourself first, Yugo. Hello, Cafe. Hi. My name is Yugo. I want to ask the, 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 following, the following question that you ask us that why filmmaking? Uh, uh, if we, comp uh, if we uh, 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 contemplate about that question and then it, is it going to lead us to determine which kind of style that we want to make and then which kind of filmmaking style that we, I don't know, is it, is it based on what we like on film? that we watch or I don't know, how's that work? Okay, um, we, we are going to talk about different styles of filmmaking in this class quite okay. uh, briefly as well. 
which is the part when I'm going to talk about perspective. But just that, you know, uh, even the type of film that you are interested in obviously falls under this question, why? Um, this question I'm, ask, I'm asking you to raise is not for you a sort of a manual for filmmaking. It's not that once you answer this question, afterwards you know exactly what story you want to tell or that you know exactly what style of filmmaking you want to pursue. This question is mainly a question which allows you to feel a little bit more confident about where you're standing as a filmmaker. You, you at least get a very clear uh, view of what it means to you to be behind the camera, to say action, to say cut. It gives you a very good reason to sit down in front of a computer and start writing a script. Let's say if your script is a story of a 10 year old boy who is lost in a forest and that's where you are, um, that's where this, your story is taking place, the asking such a question, why filmmaking, will probably lead you to, under, to understand why you have chosen that story in the first place. Why is it a 10 year old boy who is lost in a forest? You know, and sometimes the good thing about this question is that once you ask this question, you realize, oh, this is a story I was working on for a year. It doesn't make sense. It's not mine. It's not personal. It's not close to me. I am not interested in the story of this corrupt politician because that's uh, not. Uh, corresponding to the answer to this question you have to understand that as filmmakers we are very much subject to a lot of excitements you know now corona has happened i am a hundred percent sure that all of you have given it a serious thought to think about to write a story about the lockdown to write a story about coronavirus but the question will be easily answered if you really, really ask your question, why filmmaking? Then, for instance, when it comes to me, I know that I am not that much interested in the coronavirus as a filmmaker. I might be interested in understanding what this lockdown can bring to a life of a couple that are stuck together and the psychology of their relationship and how they have to now deal with each other. I would be interested in understanding the story of a couple who are on the edge of a divorce. They are supposed to get divorced next week. And all of a sudden there is an announcement of lockdown and they have to live together for another two months. I might be interested in that story, but I'm not interested in the story of how this virus will overcome the planet and how there is this uh, hero who saves the world. I know that because I have asked this question for myself and I know which stories I am interested in, which stories I'm not interested in, which films I'm interested in and which films I'm not interested in. So it's not going to be really giving you the style of the film you want to make, but it I think gives you the universe of the film that you want to make. Right? Thank you, Gaffer. Very welcome. So if there are, there are no more questions, I think we can move on um, to short filmmaking and ask ourselves, okay, so I have answered this question, why filmmaking? Maybe now it's good to ask my question, why short filmmaking? Mm. Because uh, many of us, and I have been told and I have heard many, many times in various uh, conversations and in various discussions and in various articles that short filmmaking is considered only as a bridge, as an exercise for feature filmmaking. Now, I would like to propose a question here that uh, I would like you to think about. Giovanni, have you shared by any chance those short films that I added to that Google Sheet uh, with the 
students? Yeah, uh, the needle. Yes, the list yeah, yeah. of the films that are in the Google Sheet. And have you guys watched those films by any chance? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the the reason I'm I'm asking you this question is that. Uh, I have tried to choose films that come from very different uh, approaches to filmmaking, very different ways of looking at a story and very interesting and quite successful ways of making short films, just to show you that short filmmaking is not necessarily a bridge to feature filmmaking. It's the art of its own, of its own right. It's a beautiful medium that uh, is not actually an obligation. It's not a limitation, but it's actual opportunity. Um, we know very well that most of us are interested in feature filmmaking. But if you think very hard about it, you realize that deep down, the reason you want to make a feature film, if you answer that first question, why filmmaking properly, could be the same reason why you would be making short films. Let's say, in case of myself, when I think about how films are about me understanding who I am, then the length is unimportant. Length is not going to define this question for me. And um, I am now working on two feature projects. And when I'm working on feature films, um, surprisingly, the limitations are much more than short films because you're dealing with much more money, you're dealing with a lot of people involved, you're dealing with a lot of uh, people who are in charge of the production, in charge of the financing, in charge of the distribution. A feature film will have to uh, make its own money back. It has to have a proper theatrical distribution and so many other um, obligations that come with feature filmmaking because the project is much bigger. Whereas when I'm thinking about short films, my responsibilities as an artist become way less towards others, which means uh, filmmaking will slowly become closer to the work of other artists, such as painters, such as writers who have less responsibilities towards a huge number of people involved. And the great thing, looking at those examples that I sent you, is that you have so many ways to express yourself and you cannot be probably so open, so free when it comes to feature films, because keeping the interest of your audience for two hours is one thing, and keeping the interest of your audience for 10 minutes is another thing. And this is the great opportunity that short filmmaking gives you. I understand when I started making short films myself, when I started going to film school, I have to be honest with you, I only thought that short films are exercise for feature film. I, I, loved to make feature films so much you have no idea and of course a huge part of it was also under the influence of the news the the glamour around feature films if you make a short film even if it's the most successful short film of the history it never gets the attention it never gets the exposition it never gets the exposure that a feature film has so of course i was interested in in making feature films much more than short films but as time went by and i as i started asking my uh, you know the main question why filmmaking i realized that my fascination with making feature films was also partly a matter of ego that i wanted to make something to have more attention than to have a lot of publicity to you know get to go to bigger festivals to you know to have this idea of um doing something bigger but art is not about big or small art is about how deep you go and you can just go very very beautifully deep in a short format and the great thing about it 
is that your obligations and your responsibilities towards others are even less. Meaning that today, any of you can grab your own cameras and shoot a film. You can shoot a short film, you can all edit it on your computers and you can have it finished you know, in a week time. And that's the freedom that short film format gives you. Now, whether you will make a very good short film or a bad short film, that's another question that's unrelated to uh, how much money you have. It's unrelated to how much resources you have. It all goes back to the main question, why filmmaking? Because uh, after this class is over, I'm going to send you another round of short films that I would highly recommend you watch. And those are the short films that are done with very little amount of resources. The films you watched that I sent were only sent to you to show you how different ways of filmmaking is so possible in short film format. And then I'm gonna send you another series which shows you how you can actually make very, very good films maybe with the help of two or three more people, maybe even during the pandemics, maybe even with the, your own camera. There is a very famous um, Russian um, filmmaker. His name is Kosakovsky. Um, he has made a documentary, um, not during the pandemics, but um, a long time before this. And it's a documentary he had shot through his window meaning that he was shooting the streets outside and only from the point of view of himself standing by the window, what he was seeing from the window of his own flat. And that would be one of the things I will be sharing with you to see how you can actually make such beautiful personal films without any uh, responsibilities towards others, limitations that would bound you to a certain type of filmmaking and at the same time make very quality films. But it all goes back once again to the main question, why you're making films. If, you wanna, if, you're, if the answer to your question is that I wanna make films because I want to have 200 people around me to listen to me, then yes, you might not be interested in shooting a small film on your own. But if you're, the answer to, your, to this question is that I'm um, making films because it's a way for me to express myself to myself. And it's a way of um, me expressing myself to the people around me. Then you can start shooting a film today in front of your computers. So um, I'm just said this so that we know that when we are talking about short film, at least when I think about short film, I do not believe that short films are any limitation or any sort of um, a springboard for something bigger. I think that there are deep down very um, beautiful, big, in a sense of deep uh, creations that could be outstanding and that could be really affecting me and my sensibilities as the audience as much as a feature film. Any questions? Yes, I, I want to ask just something. <laughs> okay. Nicola. Uh, uh, me and my friend uh, are just now working on, uh, on a movie just like that, on a short documentary of uh, shooting uh, the people from the, uh, from the next building <coughs> from the window. So I just want to ask the name of the director and the name of the uh, Russian movie. I'll send it to you. I send it to all of you so you can, uh -huh. it, will be, it will be a link and it's online so you can easily watch it even after the class. And uh, it's, a, it's a very, very... Um, Is it short or feature? It's short. short. It's a short. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll send it to you and you will, you will see how you like it. Uh, but the same filmmaker has made very, very big films too. I don't know if you have seen Aquarella. It's a, it's a quite well-known film that has recently come out. What's the uh, title? Sorry, what's the title? Aqu uh, Aquarella. 
Aquarelle. Uh, yeah. Which is a very big film. <laughs> and so what I'm trying to say is that the filmmaker has made very big films and also very small films. I'm going to send you this collection of films so you would have a very good idea. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful <laughs> idea to shoot the people in the building in front of you because <laughs> Um, <clears throat> uh, it's uh, th and th this will be the next topic that we would be discussing and that would be how to find your stories and um, based on uh, this uh, we will discuss even topics like that uh, because uh, going to the topic of how to find a story for a short film I think this is something that all of you are in one way or another struggling with when Giovanni is giving you tasks, you know, to come up with your own stories, to come up with uh, your own scripts, the first thing is like, okay, so what do I write? <laughs> what do I do? And uh, people uh, have many, many peculiar ways and special ways to come up with stories. I would like to know what your ways are in finding your stories. I want to hear a few examples of how you come up with your stories and based on that I will tell you how I come up with my own stories and then we can have a nice discussion about it. Okay. Uh, so it's like a feedback, right? Cover? Yes, I'm curious to know if any one of you would What's like to share now? how you... Do you mean the... Do you mean... Uh, which stages they are now, or do you mean the? No, I'm. My question is, how do you come up with a story okay. for a short film? So that's my question for the students. I'm curious to know what is the way with which you come up with a story. Let's say if if you're given a task that by next week you have to come up with a story, how are you going to come back next week with a story? Because if you know, and this is where filmmaking becomes different from many other jobs. Because if uh, if you are a dentist, you know, I can tell you, okay, for next week you have to come up with a research topic. You can easily find a research topic <laughs> about so many things that are related to health and the hygiene of the teeth. <laughs> but if I ask you as filmmakers that by next week you have to come up with your own personal stories it's asking you to deliver a child in a week time it's asking you to give me something that is personal to you at the one at the first stage and also will be interesting for the audience to watch and will have a proper beginning middle and end so what is the procedure with which you guys try to find your stories I Okay. I'll go second. I'll go second. I'll go third. Kagyo, ako mau nanya. Hi, Cafe. Hi. My name is My name is Puka. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, I just want to say uh, what you said about why you started filmmaking. It really inspired me because it made me realize. Uh, in the first place why I want to make films. Uh, and also I want to ask, how can we make a good or impactful short film with little dialogue or without dialogue at all? And if mm -hmm. it's through emotion, how can we as a filmmaker pro portray those emotion in our short film, especially if it's personal? Okay. Okay, I will definitely answer this question. So, because this might be, this might be an interesting uh, even door to our com conversation, how you come up with a short uh, story. So, a very simple definition of a story is based on Robert McKee, which is one of the most important uh, theorists of screenwriting for cinema, is a uh, story is how one person's life changes. Right? It's very simple. Yeah. It's yeah. just uh, how 
one person's life goes through a change is how he defines story. And I'm, there are hundreds of definitions of a story. And of course, it started thousands of years ago in Greece. And it's still continuing to be created new definitions of story. But out of these uh, definitions, I'm very much interested in this one because I think it corresponds quite a lot to short filmmaking in a sense that a story for me, now you're, you're talking about the question how you can actually make a profound short film that would be compelling for the audience is a first factor that we have to take into consideration is that your film needs to have a story and that story needs to um, navigate through a change meaning that you have a character a protagonist that goes through a change either uh, uh, that goes through a journey let's put it this way and through this journey goes through a change let's say either the okay. entire life changes or something small changes if you see any yeah. film that you actually like you see that what interests you is the conflict that makes someone change. I give you a simple example. You are, uh, you are standing in a traffic light, you know, behind a red traffic light as a pedestrian, and you are waiting to cross the street, you know? And you are standing on this side of the traffic light. There are many people next to you. They're also standing, it's the rush hour. You, are go, wanna, you wanna go to work, it's the beginning of your day, and you have many, many topics in your head. You have a lot of emails you want to answer, you wanna go to work, you wanna grab a coffee on the way, and uh, you are very happy that the weather is as it is, and you are happy with how you're dressed. There are so many topics in your head. Across the street, on the other side of the traffic light, all of a sudden you notice someone who is looking at you. And there is all of a sudden a gaze between you and that person. So let's say our protagonist is a 25 year old girl and is going to work. And then across the street, she sees a boy of more or less the same age who is looking at her. Mm -hmm. And the boy is standing in the crowd, many people around, but somehow, out of pure chance, the girl notices that boy and their eyes meet and they stop looking at each other and they stop and look at each other. Uh, they both know that soon this red light will become green and they will pass each other and that will be the end. And they both know that uh, sooner or later they will forget about each other. But there was this mm -hmm. moment this is a small moment that they paused. All of a sudden, she was not thinking about her coffee. All of a sudden, she was not thinking about her emails. All of a sudden, she was not thinking about the weather and how her clothes are fitting to the weather. Just for less than a minute, she was thinking of a stranger who is looking at her. Mm -hmm. Right? This could be yeah. a beginning of her story. It, it's not the story, but it could be a beginning. Let's say, mm. I give you another example. Um, a girl is sitting in a bus and going home at night, right? And it's very late bus and she notices on the bus that a boy is very quietly stealing from somebody else's pocket. Mm. She sees it. Now, she was going home, she was thinking of getting home because it was late and she was tired and she wanted to go home to watch her favorite TV series. It was just an ordinary night that she was going home, the same road she was taking, the same bus she was taking. And now all of a sudden she sees a moment that somebody is being robbed. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I gonna do? This is the beginning of a story. What I'm trying to tell you is that 
there is no recipe in any good story or bad story. The two stories I told you are actually premises of two very successful short films that have been in yeah. some of the best film festivals in the world, right? It could be given to someone and that someone would say, oh, this is rubbish. I don't even want to make a film about this. It could be given to you and you would say, actually, I somehow like this story. It has some personal connections to me. And then you would start exploring who that girl is. What does it mean to her to see a robbery on the bus? What does it mean to that other girl to see a stranger for less than a minute in a pedestrian crossing in the street? Uh, those could be the stories that we see on a daily basis happening around us. We see them, mm -hmm. we think about them for a while, and we pass. Just the other day, before the pandemic started, I was um, outside the school, and it was between the break uh, in, of the two classes, and I was uh, smoking a cigarette. And um, not far from the school, there is a, there is a shop, and there is a, the shop sells cutlery and uh, glasses and plates and all those types of beautiful things that you use in the kitchen. And there was this middle-aged woman who walked past, who was walking in the street and walked past the shop. To take a, she took a look at the window of the shop and she passed. She didn't stop. Mm -hmm. After a few meters, after she stopped, she stopped. She came back and she started looking at the glasses on, uh, in the window. And then I was thinking, what made her stop? She just passed the shop, you know, and she came back. And then I started thinking, what if this, uh, because the way she was looking at the glasses was quite interesting because uh, it's a very beautiful shop with very beautiful glasses. And she was looking at it with some sort of a longing. And then I thought, mm -hmm. what if I can build a story around this? What if I can build a story around the woman who is very much interested in buying these plates, these beautiful glasses, this beautiful cutlery, but um, because she's living in a, She's living a life where there are a lot of fights at home. And from time to time, these plates fly around because they have fights. A lot of plates break. She knows that if she buys any of these plates, sooner or later, they will break too. So I was thinking mm -hmm. about these small moments that are in every day around us. And this is what I wanted to basically tell you when I'm saying how to come up with short stories. Coming up with short stories is not about sitting home and say, okay, what is interesting? What is it that I can write that would be absolutely fantastic? Everybody would be shocked. I believe that writing a story is just equal to discovering yourself once again. It's about mm. power of observation. There is a famous Iranian um, director. His name is Abbas Kiarostami. And um, this... <laughs> yeah. And uh, he has a very famous saying. Uh, he said, if you want to have a good handwriting, my suggestion for you as an exercise is to write to write and to write until your handwriting gets better and better and better. But when it comes to filmmaking, uh, if, if you ask me for a suggestion, how to become a better filmmaker, I would say observe, observe and observe. And look at the world around you with a lot of care and with a lot of attention with a lot of patience mm. and with a lot of um, emotional attachment. Look at the 
simple things that are happening in your own family, in your own setting, in the window across the street, you know, in the, when you are sitting in a park, sometimes you see people coming and sitting in a park. All you need to do to find the story is to really look at them with emotional and human interest. What I'm trying to say is that story is not something you create in a factory. Now, we are working quite a lot on several films. Uh, Giovanni, has anyone seen Alula by any chance? Did you share the link to uh, the short film, the one with the little girl who is breaking the eggs? Yes. You're okay. Not- yes. So, Beautiful. for instance... <laughs> Thank you. Well, for instance, I just tell you how I came up with the story of that film. I was sitting in a park and it was a weekend. It was not even um, any obligations. I didn't have to go anywhere. So I was, you know, just sitting in a park, enjoying my time. And I saw this little girl and there, there was this group of birds, pigeons. And she was feeding them. She was feeding them and her mom was teaching her how to feed them. So she had this piece of bread in her hand and she would make little pieces and she would throw the uh, bread to the pigeons. And of course, when you do that, a lot of pigeons gather, right? So she was very excited. Mm. And once all these pigeons (laughs) gathered around her, she got so excited, she ran to them and scared them. And all of them flew flew Mm. away. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. (laughs) You uh, first play with them and then you scare them away. What's wrong with you, girl? And uh, and then I started (laughs) thinking, and then I started thinking, and then I started thinking. And then I came up with a story, uh, which is, you don't see that moment in the film that you saw. It's just, it was just source, of inspiration so what i'm trying to tell you is that it's all around you it's just in every corner of every street you're walking it's at a pedestrian stop it's at a red light crossing it's in a bus it's in the cafe it's in your bedroom kiarostami has a beautiful sentence again and which he said and uh, they asked him what his recommendations are for beginning filmmakers who are planning to make short films. And he said, a successful short filmmaker is someone who is able to make a short film in their own bedroom while their parents are watching TV in the living room and without the parents realizing that that their kid is shooting a film in their bedroom so that's mm. how small he sees it it's not it's not about uh it's not about um because filmmaking goes very much hand in hand with ego everybody loves to have 200 people around them everybody loves to have big cameras and big lights and a lot of vans and a lot of trucks and a lot of people who are but it's really not the essence of filmmaking The essence of filmmaking is exactly what's happening between a painter and a canvas, between a writer and a paper. And for filmmaking, it's between you and your story. So that story is around you. The most important thing is to first ask that question, why filmmaking? Once you answer that question, you naturally become sharper to what you see around you. Now, I can assure you that if this group that is uh, on this Zoom session today go to a park together, uh, you would not be interested in the same thing. Each one of you would be interested in something that is very unique, very special, and very personal to you. Even if two of you are interested in one story that is happening in the park, you are looking at it from two very different points of view. 
because each one of you is coming from a very different walk of life. Each one of you have, have grown up in very different families. Each one of you have very different interests. You are each unique. Just like your fingerprints, which are very different, your eyes are also very different. Your hearts are also very different and your brains are different. So you would be able to come up with stories. So going back to the question you asked, uh, which is also a very a good question because it corresponds to what I wanted to tell you, is the way to come up with a great short story is by observing, is the art mm -hmm. of observation and understanding that life itself is a narrative. Within the life, there are smaller narratives. And you as a filmmaker will connect to some of those na narratives and will not connect to some of those narratives. And it's only about recognizing what connects to you and what doesn't connect to you. Now, I have a few recommendations for you. These are personal recommendations about short stories. Um, <clears throat> this is specifically based on my experience when it comes to short films that are not necessarily a law, but I think they're very useful for filmmakers who are making short films. I would not try to make a short film that uh, captures a long period of time meaning that i would not try to come up with a story that portrays two years of a 10 year old girl's life from the age of 10 until age of 12. i don't think that's a very comfortable format for sh making short films i would not mm -hmm. come with um, short films that are extremely complicated to shoot mm. that would mm. just naturally create a lot of limitations that you have anyways in feature films and you are just mm. bringing them to short films short films I, if I would like to um, you know put it in a in a more concrete form uh, are not uh, going back to the same conversation you know in comparison of short films and feature films they are not just a smaller version of feature films. They are their own universe. So if you see, uh, I don't know, if you see a film like, mm, I don't know, Seven by David Fincher, for instance, and you, you cannot go like, ah, I want to do this in a short film format. It is designed for a feature film format. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. And I think a very good example of this is, uh, you know, there are writers, for instance, um, great writers that we know that are, are famous for their very long books, very long novels. You know, if you think about Charles Dickens, he's quite famous for, you know, writing uh, books that are, mm -hmm. you know, 200, 300, 400 pages. Yeah. But then there are also great uh, writers who are famous for shorter uh, uh, sh sh shorter stories let's say if you think about borges yeah. who is a very well known argentinian writer he is famous for short stories and the universe he's trying to create in the short story is very different universe to the world that you know dickens was trying to create in a feature same goes for you guys i would Personally, now if you're going a little bit more into the practical, technical way of looking at short films, as filmmakers who are making short films, I would personally think that one, I would not go for anything that would uh, complicate the concept of short filmmaking in a way that I would go for a story that is very personal to me and at the same time very executable within my resources mm. meaning that at the stage of idea and story i will never ever <laughs> come up with a story of a short film that is taking place in a world under the water because i know it's going to be very expensive for me to shoot 
and I I'm know. not going to create such a limitation for myself in the stage of idea. You know, instead, I will go for a story that is happening above the water, but has the same personal attachments for me, right? So <clears throat> at this point, I'm working on a short story that I hope that I will be able to shoot during the pandemics. And of course, when the pandemics is here, I'm quite happy because, uh, well, I'm not quite happy about the pandemics, but I'm quite happy because some of the things I was telling my students, they finally have to listen to. The students I have in Prague, when I told them that you have to have small crews, you have to go for small films, that you have to go for small stories, they always try to do, you know, do something much bigger and some, sometimes complicate the lives for themselves. Now with the pandemics, there cannot be more than four people on a shoot. <laughs> so they are naturally obliged to come up with stories that are corresponding to this limitation. And believe it or not, it's a great challenge to come up with a story that is executable in such format. And I have to tell you that this uh, challenge could open a lot of doors to creativity. Mm. Any questions? Thank you so much, Kafe. Very welcome. Yes. Yes. Question? Siapa? Who? Tadi Prayogo dulu bukan? Go on, go on. Duluan, duluan. Uh, hello, Kafe. Nice to meet Hi. you. Hi. Nice to meet you too. Suara lu. Uh, you know. Kenapa? Baralu. kurang kedengeran kurang kedengeran sekarang gimana ya yeah, yeah. oke okay. nice to meet you cafe and thanks for the opportunity uh, all i want to ask is how do you confident of your idea it's like when i get an idea uh, i'm confident about it but in the middle of of the writing i start to doubt about the about my idea first like uh this idea is not good enough like uh this one is maybe better for my idea and there is my doubt in my writings all of the time is like that in me i don't know how to how to fight that but it's always be my problem like can you tell me your secret like how do you be confident with your idea i don't know <laughs> um so there is um this is a very very big topic because um uh, so i tell you something simple we have a, a very uh, interesting perspective in a sense that i am now looking at you guys i can see your faces right and in a normal life where we can you know move around we see other people and the only people that, that we do not see are ourselves we have a very specific opinion of how we look like we have a very specific opinion of how we sound like and i'm sure you have experienced that feeling that when you for instance record your own voice and when you listen to it you feel like oh that that doesn't sound like my voice. That sounds a little bit different to my voice. Or when you see for the first time your own recorded image in a film, if you are in front of the camera, and then when you watch your own face, you feel like, oh, that looks very different to what I see every day in front of the mirror. Because uh, <laughs> that's not how we see ourselves. We have a very strange relationship with ourselves. And it's very hard to demystify this relationship. Uh, at the same time, there is another issue. Uh, I don't know um, if you have experienced this or not. Usually when something is created by you, you are the worst judge to say whether it's good or bad. <laughs> Let's say you know many parents whose uh, children are you know 
obviously, when you look at those children, they're not good children. They're criminals, they're problematic, they're troublesome, they're hooligans. But when you talk to the parents, they have a very, very different image of their children. They think they're actually the nicest kids in the world because it's a part of their own creation and it's very hard to have the correct distance to be able to evaluate it. Now, because we have this problem, and this is a problem of us as human beings, because we are not very good in understanding what we have done, you know, we sometimes have two very different reactions. One reaction is what you are experiencing, which is doubt, and always thinking that there is something wrong with my idea. Another, uh, another reaction, which is the opposite, is that uh, an unnecessary blind pride, which whatever you come up with, you think is best. And if somebody tells you, no, it's not good, the first thing you think is that, oh, they don't understand me or they don't understand my story. So how to, how to understand whether the story you have is good or bad brings me to a very important question. Uh, there, there are two things when we are dealing with the story. One thing is what, meaning what is the story? You know, the story, as we said, is the story of a girl who sees a robbery on a bus, right? And then the second question is how? How are you gonna tell that story, right? These are two different things. And as a filmmaker, you have to understand that only having an idea is just the beginning. It will only be complete when you know what and you also know how to execute it, from which angle to see it and how to do it, right? Now, my suggestion <clears throat> for you as a filmmaker, the first thing, the first suggestion is obvious. I'm sure you have um, heard this in many forms from other teachers, from your own family, from your own friends. Exposing yourself to great art is a must. And I'm not talking about sitting in front of Netflix. I'm talking about exposing yourself to proper art, not necessarily only films. I'm talking about literature, very serious literature. I'm talking about fine art. I'm talking about theater. I'm talking about cinema. <clears throat> and when we are talking about cinema, I'm talking about some of the great works that have been done throughout the history. I'm not talking about what is the latest film by this director or that director. I'm talking about a history of great films. And for a filmmaker to be ready to evaluate themselves, I think it is essential that you expose yourself to good quality films. I give you an example. Uh, if I am all the time exposed to very high quality films i get a little bit um, and um, my sensibilities my 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 mentality becomes enriched becomes enhanced Be i become more sensitive and i become <clears throat> more educated about high quality art so this is the obvious meaning that this is the first step that you need to take and there is no easy way around it there is no shortcut there is no fast course that you would be able to achieve this in a week it requires constant daily uh, exposure to high quality art i'm doing it for years i i hope that by un, until i am alive i'll be able to do it every day i'm reading every day I'm trying to watch films every day. And, um, you know, this pandemics, for instance, was a great opportunity for me to all of a sudden be able to watch some of those great films I didn't watch until today. 
you know? Yeah. So that's the first step. And that's obvious. So I hope we don't have to discuss the obvious. I hope that we don't need to um, think about the, um, the necessity of exposure to high art. Now, the second thing becomes uh, more personal. When you come up with a story, the first thing that um, you need to think about is the structure of a story, you know? So, um, which is very vital. You need to understand what makes a story, you know? <clears throat> Sometimes you have an idea and then it's only an idea. It's not a story, you know, because a story in a classical form of it, as, as we know, it always has a beginning, middle and end. All these films that you have seen here in this list of films that I've sent you, they all have a beginning, uh, which means the introduction, middle, which means development, an end, which means conclusion or closure, right? Uh, so you need to also understand the craft of filmmaking. So not only you have to expose yourself to high quality art, but you also have to educate yourself in the structure of storytelling, in the structure of short film storytelling. And you have to watch a lot of short films, a lot of high quality short films. Giovanni is a master of recommending great films. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that if you just listen to Giovanni's recommendations on, on great films, you are on the right track. That's I'm like by you, you. Pardon? I'm inspired by you. <laughs> no, it's not true. Um, you have very, very but it's, but it's great taste. We, we share the same taste of film. So, I mean, I, I found we, we are the same taste of film so yeah i have so many recommendations for you also <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean every time we're discussing with giovanni uh you know we have seen so many great short films and it's still a lot more to watch and that's also <clears throat> something that filmmakers never consider let's say i send you the short film the most beautiful man in the world you all saw it about this little girl who goes out, sees this very strange man, and then goes back home. It's a very simple story. So it's a story, let's say, if I want to tell it to you, uh, it's about a little girl who is being neglected by her mother. We have a feeling that she's a single child. We also have a feeling that the mother is a single parent. And the girl is spending most of her day in front of TV and being bored. As she spends time outside, she begins to get carried away a little bit further than she should from her house. And she meets this stranger, which seems to be dangerous, but at the same time, friendly. And at the same time, a little bit too close to a kid. And there seems to be also some sort of an intimate uh, relationship between them. And as soon as the girl becomes interested in the man, she's called by the mother to go back home. And then her, her life goes back to watching TV again, completely bored next to, his, next to her dog. Now, what has happened? What has happened is a small change in this girl's day, that's it, right? Her life hasn't changed upside down. The world hasn't, you know, gone upside down. Nobody has died. No gun has been fired. Nobody was murdered. It was a very simple story of a girl meeting a stranger for a few seconds and then being asked to come back home it looks like her life is almost the same as before, except for now she also has an encounter, a very strange encounter in her life. Now, if I am the writer of this story, I would come up with this idea, okay, I have this story. Is it a good story or a bad story? The first thing I would do, I would definitely share my story 
with the people that I truly trust. Meaning that now I have written a script, I told Giovanni, Giovanni, I would like you to read the story and tell me what you think. I know Giovanni's background. <laughs> I know what kind of films he likes. So I know that the, you know, the feedback he's going to give me is going to be very, very honest. And at the same time, coming from someone who understands filmmaking quite a lot. Okay. I'm not going to go show it to the shopkeeper downstairs who I, you know, uh, buy from. I'm not going to show it uh, to my brother who is maybe very close to me, but he doesn't understand my sensibilities in cinema because he's not a filmmaker. I'm not going to, I'm going to basically show it to the right people. And now here comes the difficult part. I'm going to very carefully open up myself to criticism and listen and try to see what people are telling me, those people that I trust. Because believe it or not, when, uh, when you get criticism, if you, if you write a script that you believe that this is a great script, even if you show it to your favorite filmmaker and your favorite filmmaker tells you it's not a good script, you would say, ah, oh, he doesn't understand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and, and now when it comes uh, doubt, I have to tell you that it's a, uh, it's much position that you have than being proud. Doubt is a very uh, beautiful source of um, creative energy for uh, an artist. I think, <laughs> I think the reason we have art is because we have doubt. Yeah. If we were sure about everything in the universe, if we knew everything about everything, if we knew what would happen after we die, if we knew how our lives will be in the future, if we knew everything, we would not be interested in art. Art is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think the position of doubt is a good position, but you have to make sure that this doubt doesn't overshadow your work. It means that you have to constantly write, you have to constantly expose yourself to good, uh, high quality art. At the same time, you have to read a lot of uh, theoretical um, matters related to filmmaking, screenwriting, uh, directing, and um, also practice it on a daily basis. And keep the doubts. The doubts will always help you when you are writing, but make sure that uh, you always have someone to talk to as, uh, your, as your mentor, as your advisor, as your friend, as your consultant, and uh, try to always tell your stories to them and see how they react. Um, as the last step I would tell you, I think it always helps is try to think of your story as a story you're going to tell your friends. Right? Uh, because I'm, if I'm a good storyteller in a, in a form of a film, you know, I know exactly what side of my audience feelings I'm going to be approaching. Let's say when I was writing Alula, I tried several times to tell the story to my friends, to the friends that I trust. And I, I didn't tell them that this is a story that I'm gonna shoot. <laughs> I told them this is story as a story, you know? So there was this girl and, you know, she was left on the, uh, on the, in, the, in the school on her own and she was waiting for her mom to pick her up. And so I told the story from A to Z to my friend. And then I realized that this friend was not interested. And then I was thinking, okay, I'll try to tell it next time to another friend differently. And I tried from various ways of telling that story. And by saying that story to someone else, I started realizing such interesting insights 
to the story myself. So a great way of fixing your story and fixing your doubts is to say your story loud and share it with other friends, like-minded filmmakers, you know, tutors. When the story comes out of your mouth, already in that process, you see the problems better. You see the empty uh, holes better. You see the gaps better. And believe it or not, as you are saying it, new ideas come. And new, it's a very strange function of the brain. And it always works. But it only works when you are telling it to someone of the same sensibilities, of the same uh, mindset. You have to say to someone who is a proper um, uh, listener, it cannot be just someone. It has to be someone who is listening, who is a participant. So I hope this helps. Of course, there is no way I can give you a very certain recipe. You know, we are talking about filmmaking. We are talking about human beings. You know, I can, I can never tell you. For instance, if you come and if you come and tell me how to be successful, you know, how can I tell you? Or if I, if if somebody asks me, uh, you know, how how can I uh, go on a successful date? You know, all those nonsense. Uh, you know, tutorials, how to live a happy life or how to have a happy marriage or how to have, uh, you know, happy family. You know, this is, we are human beings. We are not machines. From, from one person to another, the whole scenario changes. You come from different backgrounds. We, you know, we have different histories. We have different family trees. We are, we are growing up in different weathers. So what I'm trying to tell you is basically on my own personal experiences, you, you, what you have to do is to find your own way of thinking about what I'm saying and coming up with your own recipes. No one can give you a very good recipe of how to get rid of your doubt except for yourself. You are the only person who has the key. Other people can help you on the way, but you are the one who has to find uh, the key and put the key in the right door, right? So, any other questions? Thank you very for the inside. <laughs> okay. Pardon? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. well. Okay. He said thank you for the... Very welcome. <laughs> Uh, race. Oh, Lutfi, he wants to ask something, right? Uh, hi. hi, hi, Cafe. My name is Lutfi, and a uh, freelance director. And uh, I want to ask you something that um, um, it's been bugging me for uh, for ages. Is it is it wrong if I um, if I if I um, start to think of an a story for an idea of a story. I start with the um, opening and the closing, and I always kind of left the middle part for later to think about. Yeah, no, is there's it, nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. No, okay. no, no there, there is nothing wrong with any way of looking at a story, Lutfi. Uh, sometimes, as I said, sometimes a story can be a moment or an image in your head and then around that image you create a story you know sometimes you have this feeling that i have this image of this old lady who is in a cemetery alone walking in a cemetery alone and that image doesn't leave me and that image slowly shapes itself into a story, right? Or I have this image of this, um, you know, I don't know, um, this, for instance, I, if you have seen the short film I, um, I made a long time ago, Occasional Showers, which I think Giovanni also shared with you. It's a film I made like, 
uh, I don't know, 2013 or 2012, uh, there is a moment where this man is walking in this field that is uh, on both sides. There are these uh, sort of, you know, plants, uh -huh. right? So I tell you two things. There was one thing. We were going on a trip in Czech Republic and for the first time I saw those farms. And I uh -huh. asked my friend, because I had not seen it before, such thing doesn't exist in Iran. And, um, and I looked at it and I said, what the hell is this? <laughs> and a friend said, well, this is, uh, this is a hop field. Uh, this is where they um, make the hops for beer. And I said, can we stop? I want to have a look. So we stopped and I saw these corridors of plants and I was looking at it and I was uh, extremely fascinated by it. And I just imagined someone walking there <laughs> and that's where the idea started which is really uh, irrelevant to the rest of the film if you think about it i just had this idea this fascination with this uh, farm and then i for a while i was thinking about it and uh, I couldn't come up with any story. And then another time, a few months later, I was in the train station to pick up a friend. And then I saw this uh, sign of, you know, departures, arrivals, all those destinations, you know, it was like, I don't know, Hamburg, Berlin, I don't yeah. know where all. And then I was thinking, and you know, I had my life, I had uh, my job, I had, everything and then i was thinking of all those destinations and so many options right and i was thinking what if i just leave today i just take one of these trains and just leave yeah. and it really it really stayed with me i really even got tempted to get a ticket and just leave <laughs> you know and then that feeling somehow got combined with that image of the farm <laughs> mm. and became that film. All you right. know what I'm saying? So it was just two things. But it took me some time to sue them together, to connect them together. It was not, you know, it, it happened organically. It was not something that I did by force. Now, sometimes we have this image and we think that that's a very beautiful image. We are um, we want to do something around it. You might end up actually, uh, at, in the end, uh, you know, you, you start now with the ending, for instance, and you're stuck with it. And then you slowly cry, try to develop the middle. And then you have a feeling that, ah, oh, but th with this middle, I won't end up with the ending I was thinking. And this also requires a little bit of openness because your story has to be organic. You cannot order your story to go to a very specific point. You know, you have to not be a dictator, but to be a little bit more democrat with your characters to really let them feel organic. So there is nothing wrong with it, but just make sure that your daily observations can feed those two beginnings and endings. Because the middle part, could be somewhere, you know, in your daily life and you just have to find it. It's only that you have to be actively observing. I don't know if that helps or in any ways with what you're saying. That, that, that really helps. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. <clears throat> okay, great. I'm happy. It helps. It's a um, it's, it's very short session we're having and uh, I understand that we can discuss many topics forever. I have so yeah. many stories, you know, to share. But I think if you if you agree, I would like to just talk about one very important matter as well, um, as like the sort of the last to main topic I want to discuss with you, because let's say so far we have discussed why filmmaking, we have discussed why short filmmaking. And we have discussed 
how to come up with a short film story. Of course, uh, it doesn't mean that after this class, you will all sit down and write your own short stories. It requires observation. It requires a lot of thinking, being uh, alone with yourselves, being connected to your hearts. But one important thing that's also vital for filmmakers is perspective. So it's a slightly different to observation. I tell you a simple situation and based on that, we understand what I mean by perspective. Let's say in the scenario of a, of a daily life, you are coming back from work and you're coming back from school you know it's seven o'clock in the evening you're in the street you're walking home so many things in your head maybe you have a plan in the evening maybe you have an assignment to do maybe you have to visit a friend maybe you want to go and watch something nice maybe you want to just stay home and relax and just so many thoughts in your head as you're walking home and then as you're walking home you hear a fight on the other side of the street right so you stop for a second, your thoughts are all of a sudden, not anymore, and you look. And on the other side of the street, you see a couple fighting, fighting properly, not just argument, but it's very, very escalated fight. They're not beating each other, but they could be doing it in a few seconds if nobody stops them, right? You stop. Like naturally, if we see something like this, we stop. And from this moment on, we have hundreds of scenarios, depending on who you are. Now, one person can stop for a few seconds and think, ah, oh, it's not my business, and continues walking home. One person would say, okay, that's interesting. I'm curious, let's see what happens. And stands where they're standing and continue watching to see where the, the fight goes. Another person would say, oh, that's not nice. This man is shouting at this woman. I think I have to do something and tries to go closer and interfere. Another person would say, ah, oh, from where I'm standing, I really cannot hear what they're saying. I don't want to interfere, but I want to hear a little bit more. So let me get closer. So they would go a little bit closer, but still not interfere. So you see, there are so many scenarios how you can deal with the situation. Now, this is the question of perspective. As a filmmaker, when you have a story, you know, you have to understand where you're standing and where you're looking at the story from. You might be a person who is only an observer standing from far, right? Let's say in the story, in the film that you uh, watched, The Diary of a Beginner by Elias Soleiman, it's, uh, it's actually a part of a film. It's um, really it's, great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's actually a film called Seven Days in Havana. Mm -hmm. And they asked uh, seven filmmakers to make, to each make a short film connected uh -huh. to uh, Havana. And one of them is Gaspar. One of them is Emir Kusturitsa, ah. and one of them is Elias Soleiman, and this is his episode. So you can see that he has a point of view of an observer who without interfering, he's just looking. There is comedy, there is a little bit of judgment, there is a little bit of um, uh, some sense of irony in, in his voice, but he is not uh, anything more than an observer. It's very beautiful. I mean, the, the, the moment when the film finishes on this old woman walking to the, uh, to the beach yeah. and to the, to the waves, it's, it's one of those images that will, that will stay with me forever. Uh, now, think about Another film which is in the, in the same uh, group of films I recommended, which looks similar, 
but it's not at all similar, which is World of Glory. It looks like an observation. It's even in terms of style, they're all like wide shot, but from the very an observer who is seeing a tragedy unfold. And you cannot even participate in the tragedy. The director is very cruel and puts you in the position of one of those people who is just watching it, you know? So, and now if you think about Needle, for instance, it's a story of a little girl and the director is no more an observer, is actually eye level following the story of this girl with her. So wherever she is, the director is there. So she's not following the mother, she's not following the father, she is following only her. So if she goes and roams around in the bathroom, she goes and roams around in the bathroom with her. And it becomes a way of understanding this girl's emotions through following her. Or if you look at the story of uh, the most beautiful man in the world, it goes the same way, you know? It, uh, now, comparing Needle and the most beautiful girl in the world, Needle still keeps some distance from the, from the main character, gives her some space, Whereas the most beautiful man in the world goes as close as possible to the skin of this little girl and really tries to go into her, you know, life. So what I'm trying to tell you is that it's very important for you as filmmakers to understand that you need to have a perspective. You need to have an angle with which you are following a story. A story itself, I'm going back to a conversation we had, is one thing, which is what, and your perspective is how. Let's say <clears throat> when, when we were making Alula as an example, and Freezing. Iya freezing mas. Bukan kita yang ngelag kan? Uh, we haven't seen your face. We are missing. We are missing you now. Dia yang freezing apa kita ya? Kita nggak freezingnya dia, dia kak. Halo kafe. Signalnya dia kayaknya.
Kavi, I think your connection is, there is a problem with you, with your connection. Kavi, do you hear me? Oh. Ada nggak freeze kan? Enggak kok. Enggak mas. Aman. Oh, tunggu bentar mungkin dia sinyalnya hilang. Ada. Yaudah, yuk gue yang ngomong sekarang. Ini udah beres mas. Belum masih 15 menit lagi. Bagus ya dia inspirasi. Ya, asik ya. Bagus banget ya. Kayak ini, apa? Golden Waste. Siapa itu namanya? Pak Riyot Teguh. Yo, kok ini bro? Om Riyot Teguh. Enggak, maksudnya dia yang nge- ngejelasin ini bukan how, tapi why gitu loh. Why, why, why. Bagus sih. Ya. Iya, benar. Yeah. Emang harus sih. Bukan teknis ya? Yo Ibro, nggak usah niman Tapi lebih ke, ya. iya lebih ke. Mantap Karena voting mirip ya. Jeremy Irons sama satu lagi tuh, menurut gue sih Jeremy. Mirip <laughs> banget sama John Stamos <laughs> karena John Stamos tahu, mirip banget. John Stamos yang mana sih? Yang main Full House. Wah nggak lihat. Full House kok ya? Mirip, mirip Chris Ahmed cuman versi putihan. Mirip Tanggu kali, gila lu. link Oke, okay. apa yang enggak working ya? Coba sih. Sendang di email.
with their window. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Do you hear me? Yes. Giovanni, you are on mute. Yeah, we hear you. I think yeah, I don't know. I think what happened? Uh, the connection, I think. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so basically, um, just to finish what was saying was that um, so we went from very extreme wide shots slowly to medium shots and the whole idea behind it was to first capture this girl in this new universe and slowly going from her relationship <clears throat> with this universe to her very slowly step by step right so at first you would be able to actually see how she is communicating with this new world, which is this abandoned, uh, abandoned building, and how she is roaming around, and very slowly getting closer to her until we go to her on a medium shot, where we actually see how she's going to deal now with you know, a nest that is there. So what I'm trying to tell you basically just to wrap up what we were discussing and then leave the rest of the remaining session to the questions you have, it is very important you as filmmakers also understand your perspective. Meaning that if you have a story, let's say that you are writing now, you have a protagonist and that protagonist is going through a conflict you need to understand where you are standing in relationship, in relation to your character. Where you are standing, how you're observing them. Are you observing them at eye level? Are you looking down on them? Are you looking up to them? Are you sympathizing with them? Are, do you care for them? Or are you uh, humiliating them? It's very important that you understand how you are actually um, dealing with your character and with your story. And it all, again requires to understand if, um, as, a, as a test, let's say, if you put yourself in the universe of your story as an invisible observer, let's say a scene in your story takes place in a bedroom, right? In the bedroom where you're character is reading an i don't know a magazine now if you were invisible and if this was a real life where in that bedroom would you be sitting and looking at your character would you be sitting by the door watching you know that character from far or no would you go closer to see the impressions and expressions on their faces or you even go and see what they are reading in the magazine or would you be looking at them from front? Would you look at them from side? And most importantly, uh, uh, in terms of emotions, how far or how close you would want to be to your character. So your perspective not only shows uh, your you know, technical side of filmmaking in terms of your camera angle, your shot size, you know, your approach, whether it's a moving camera or a static camera, it also shows your own personal relationship with your story in a sense that how you really feel in every stage with that character. How much you care? How do you judge them? How do you evaluate them? What do you think about them? 
and what part of these emotions that you have you want your audience also to experience so if there is a moment for your character that in this bedroom when she is reading the magazine she notices that she is so much in love with the life of these magazine models you have to also understand how you feel about that feeling of hers and how much of that feeling can you bring to your audience so does your audience also understand this feeling of hers does your audience also understand that she wants to live a life of a magazine model and more importantly how do they see it do they see it as ah what a miserable woman or no ah this is so uh insecure or no i actually really respect her no matter what she thinks you know it's really really a very delicate matter the perspective of a filmmaker and this comes from your personality this comes from how you evaluate the people around you how you evaluate yourself how you evaluate evaluate your life and i think it's essential for you to really think about your characters and how you and think about how you evaluate those characters how you evaluate those stories emotionally not intellectually but emotionally on a on a deep down heart level what you really think about them and what you want your audience to think about them and what you have to do audience feel that way right and this is a question of perspective of course it's a really like a long conversation but uh, i would send you this list of short films i will share it with giovanni and i'm sure he would um share it with you and these are very simple films and with very simple characters as protagonists who are going through very simple stories and conflicts and how the filmmakers have created very also interesting perspectives to those characters you know think about the most beautiful man in the world it's a very simple story but what makes it very interesting is where the filmmaker is standing in relation to the story how much of the mother do we see it's very important question in that film it's only one shot when she's calling her to come back home and we don't even see the calling we only see her and we see the girl who has turned her head as if somebody has called her name the rest of the time when we know she exists is through her conversation on the phone with somebody else how much of the man do we see how much of the house do we see you know those are the questions that are very important for you as filmmakers this is your perspective so your biggest challenge is not necessarily what but it's actually how because the same story of the most beautiful man in the world could turn into a complete rubbish if it was basically looked at from a very different uh, perspective it could be a very uninteresting absolutely meaningless film but it's just the perspective of the filmmaker which makes it very special so to wrap it up our <clears throat> general conversation about meaning of life <laughs> um why filmmaking i think it's an essential question if you don't answer it today you have to answer it tomorrow if you don't answer it tomorrow i'm afraid it will come to you and it will corner you at some point in your career you have to know why you're doing it just like you have to know why you're doing anything else in your life and please try to give it a very very proper thought uh how to come up with a story and i believe that <clears throat> educating yourself exposing yourself to high quality art 
films, literature, painting, fine art, music, great music. I'm not talking about Radiohead. I'm talking about really high quality classical music. You know, I'm not saying that the Radiohead is bad. I'm saying that this is not the highest achievements of music, you know, in, in the history of humanity. You really have to understand the sophistications that come with a form of art such as music, which is not dependent on lyrics. If you listen to Vivaldi, if you listen to Schubert, if you listen to Rachmaninoff, if you listen to Mozart, the, the way they connect your heart without an actual tangible narrative, without lyrics, without stories of this girl and that boy, without the stories that are usually come across in today's music with lyrics, is a very, very great exercise for you to understand how art should be coming from human emotions. You know, how narrative is such a fluid matter. And apart from educating yourself with high quality art, you have to also uh, educate your power of observation. You have to be very avid observers of the world around you and the world inside you, very uh, attending, very careful, very delicate people who are sensitive, who are, whose emotions are very sharp and whose uh, uh, five senses are very uh, avid and always you know, active. The, then I'm, I'm, I'm very, very positive that very interesting stories come to you. And most importantly, uh, just to finish this uh, whole idea of why filmmaking, how to come up with stories, is also the question of perspective. Is the question of where you're standing in relation to that story. Remember that Hamlet it has been done a hundred times after Shakespeare in different forms, in theater, in music, in film, God knows what, Gross. right? It's the question of perspective that makes one Hamlet much a great piece and another Hamlet a uh, piece of garbage. It's not about what. Uh, um, I always have this very interesting... Uh, you know, when you read, uh, for instance, some uh, film criticism online, they always have this spoiler alert. Like, if you haven't seen the film, don't read this paragraph because that will spoil the film. I have never been actually interested. Let's say, if I know how a film ends, it's not going to stop me from watching the film. Many of the films I watch are the films I have watched already 10 times. And I know exactly how they end. And I know how they start and I know how they develop. So it's not only what, it's how. So uh, it's not about, uh, filmmaking is not only about surprising me in the end, you know, to show me something that everybody would be, ah, I was not expecting that. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's one way. I'm not saying it's not valid, but what makes a great film, a great film, is not how it surprises you, it's how it touches you. And uh, so that's a question of how. And that's about it. Now, if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer. Uh, and uh, after the class, I'll definitely uh, share a few links with you. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um... Kevin? Uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> uh, the time is, <laughs> yeah, almost, yeah, but, uh, uh, but okay. honestly, uh, we are, we, uh, I mean, we, uh, we are very enjoyed, very enjoying now. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think it's up to you, Kabe. So, uh, is it okay if, uh, we, uh, extend like 15 on tw or 20 minutes to to give opportunity to some student to have a question for you is it okay for you or yeah I, i'm i'm totally fine i i can even 
uh, if it makes it really easier, if uh, I receive even the questions, I can even answer in written form. So this would be also something that I can do. So if any of you have any questions, you can obviously share it and I'll just, you know, write the answers to you. So this way it will, we, will have, we won't worry about time and we won't worry about, you know, uh, how many more <laughs> questions are ahead. So you can, uh, I think this is something that I always uh, do. It's also good because when you ask the question, I also have maybe some references so I can even share the references in the answer. So maybe if, if Giovanni, I don't know if this is um, manageable, if, if there would be some questions, if it can be. Yeah, yeah. Instance, yeah, if I if I just have it even in a word file, I can reply in a word file, and this way, everyone can have the all the questions, and everyone can have all the answers, and yeah. you know, we can read it. But it's a uh, it's very nice, obviously, talking to you guys, and uh, yes, I hope that your your journeys as filmmakers will be very fruitful. I know you are in very uh, good hands with Giovanni. Uh, he is Thank you. a very, very serious artist, and I'm sure that uh, you will be you will be not exposed to anything lower than uh, great films <laughs> and great filmmaking with him. Uh, as uh, just one last note, I always um, say it, and I think. Um, your stories and your filmmaking career as a way of enriching your lives. You know, don't see it as a... You don't see it as some nail in your shoes. See it as a, a great company, a very um, interesting uh, way of uh, enjoying life and see it as a way of um, uh, even uh, helping yourself understand life better. Mm -hmm. And I think filmmaking will become uh, much more interesting for you. And um, for that, you don't need to really listen to the loud uh, buzzing of what's happening in the film industry for now. <laughs> now you have to, you have to really th think about only what's important to you in a sense of what you want to do as a filmmaker and uh, don't stress yourself and just make sure that you stray true to yourself that the story that you want to say is the story that you really care about that's all i can say you know honesty can only take you further wow thank you it's it's very beautiful for you yeah <laughs> Well, so thank you very much, everyone. Yeah, Enjoy thank you. The Dafe. rest of your days, and so, uh, it was very nice meeting thank you. you. So thank before you. that, um, so if there is there, there there are some question from you guys, you can send the email to you, right, Kabe? And yes, um, now everybody has my email, right? I'll be wearing the same email. To yeah, you, I, will, so. I, will, I will share. I will share it. Yeah. yeah. So if there are any questions, they can send it to me, or however you want, they can send it to you. What, however, works better for the class. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. It's very beautiful. It's very very nice. welcome. Thank you very much, Giovanni, for this opportunity. I'm yeah. very happy to be in this class. Uh, yeah. yeah, enjoy your thank day. You. Stay safe. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Take bye. care. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Mantap. Mantap. <laughs> Apa? Mantap. Mantap lur. Mantap. Mantap. Ini kafe teguh nih, kafe teguh. Panas lah hari ini, panas. <laughs>